The first map of today to go the way of Fnatic. It was Cobblestone and a 16-14 after various ups and downs. We did manage to get that first map done and dusted. And talking of dust, that's where we're going next. Dust 2 will be our second map of the series. Now, it's an interesting one. Uh, it does seem like it's very difficult to put any sort of kind of... Uh, any sort of depth to Fnatic's an analysis right now? I mean, uh, you have some great stuff for VP, Chad, but with Fnatic, um, you said, I mean, let's just run with them for a moment, Henry. Okay. You said they have three good maps. Yeah. Dust2 and Cobble were on that list. And Cash. And Cash. Yeah. How, where are you pulling that from? Is that something they've said in interviews or so is yeah, there, like like I said, there stats? We interviewed okay. like Rose, so we were kind of talking about how they're approaching their, their game right now. They're not going to any events. They're focusing on just uh, getting the, well, this is a couple of weeks ago, right? Um, so the idea, sorry, just getting some interesting affair. Um, so yeah, they, they said those are the maps they're focusing on right now. They want to get those solid, sure. and then they'll expand from there. So Dust2 makes sense, Cash makes sense. Is the probably yeah. the, in terms of the fundamentals of the game, uh, that's the map probably everyone knows that they play the most. It's one of the maps as well. You can rely heavily on individual performances and just uh, a basic team approach. So this makes sense for them to allow their big players to have these kind of maps. Mm. Dennis is an absolute beast on this map, especially on the pistol rounds. So it kind of makes sense, right? To have that as your your first stepping stone to being a, a solid team. Uh, is that is is that kind of something you would you would directly agree with, Chad? That it is, and this has always been the, the opinion is that Dust Two is the you know, the aimers map, the kind of you know, the less strategic less strategy is necessary to find success. Is, would you agree with that, or yeah. there is definitely depth yeah. to be found on Dust? It's right? a great idea to start with the basics. It's like basically a whole sure. new team. They only got two guys left from the original roster, and then they've thrown in some unknown quantities here. Um, so definitely, that's a spot on point. But but the map by nature, I'm suggesting, like is the map by nature. Does it favour just good aim, strong aimers, and you don't need so much strategy? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. There's definitely some depth to it. I think a lot of teams, especially with the XQ these days, have developed into quite an interesting kind of uh, approach now. We've obviously got the smoke down CT spawn, the two smokes towards the long crossover, mm -hmm. and then you're able to like almost lock in the AWP player. Like It's not as easy to hold it with an AWP anymore. Um, G2 are probably the best at that execution, although they didn't really show it this weekend. They seem to forget they do that. Um, basically, <laughs> the idea is so. Like, the idea of the smokes are long now. You have a... Uh, Go for long control, you just smoke off towards the pit and you're kind of segregating a player towards that pit area and yes. focusing on him. Then you fall back into more of a default play, wait for the reaction from the CTs. Or you get the short control to start smoking spawn, doing the same smokes but deeper up in towards the A sides and then you're dropping down. And uh, yeah, we could talk about that all day. We really there, there is, there is, my point is there's, there, are, there is depth once you get to a sort of yeah. point as a you team. There are, there are executions available. You can check my YouTube video. I did a, a bit of babbling about uh, Dust 2 on there, so check that out yeah. for some and good points on Dust 2. And how would we find that sponge? If uh, I was desperate uh, to find your YouTube channel, where do I go? I don't know what the URL is. Oh, just what it Google. Is. is it like one that's like KL Capital yeah, 5? So. Capital 5. What is wrong with me? <laughs> okay. Uh, that was our last points. Quickly though, predictions. Uh, is it safe to assume VP have always been notoriously not very good at Dust2. It's not been kind of high on their, on their list. Do we lean towards the Swedes again here? I'm with VP. They're bringing it into their map pool. I think uh, I want to get behind them. I want them to win. All right. So okay. I'm with VP. He's, he's keeping it political. How about you? You're going to take him a fanatic. Yeah. All right. Got to keep it interesting, right? Desk is split. Desk is split, and of course, in the interest of time, we would love to talk about that further, but instead, let's just get the game underway. Our second map of the night is about to go down. It's Dust2 between Fnatic and VP. Thank you very much, gents. Yes, let's move right on along here to Dust2, and they kind of teased it at the end. We don't yep. see a lot of this map from VP at all, Lauren. No, in the last couple of months, I guess, three, like three months-ish, you only see it three times, but they have won every single time, and including that, there was an IP. Um, being able to take them down there, not exactly a bad feat at all. They played Certainly the E-League finals at no, all? I, I think they've, they've played it during E-League. That was, that was the main time we seen right. it once during Pro League, and that was um, against Dignitas. So again, they picked up wins here, but it's n it's, it's a newer addition to them, sure. as, as kind of uh, hinted on on the desk. Whereas Fnatic have been very open, saying, you know what, we're looking at this one. This one, th this is one of our building blocks. This is one of our starting positions. We want to get under our belt. And so far, they've looked good. This was the Fnatic that, uh, well, this map with this Fnatic started to get people's attention on this map specifically. Um, and obviously, a couple of you know, cash as well is there. But let's see how this goes down. That's probably on the CT side. He said it would be Fnatic and went and has all the utility to play with. And Neo's going walkabouts. The pistol here. Yeah, a lot for Winton there. Double flash and smoke for him. So, let's we'll see how that one gets to put to use. While Neo and Pasha are being sort of kept busy here over on short, well, Fnatic are getting in position on long here. Twist doing a great job of keeping them busy and he gets himself a kill. That's just a bonus on top. The rest of Fnatic now making their way down long. It's a flash, but it's going to be an unnecessary one here. As now Twist again trying to harass, trying to keep Pasha busy, but now Fnatic have the sight. It's going to have to be VP playing for the retake in a 4v4, but Neo is low. Yeah, and they don't have any flashes, and Taz and Snacks don't have armor. But again, that may not be a bit of a problem here, because already Snacks gets off to a flying start, leaps up, hops up and down, and this always makes me nervous these days, because yeah. it actually works, which is the more worrying thing. But let's look at Fnatic's off-plant positions there, kind of typed in on the site till Dennis. 
you know, the pistol arrow himself can do as much as he can, but it's not enough to seal the deal. He gets them low, he doesn't take them down, and the defuse will come through. Yeah, interesting stuff there. Neo even going untouched in that little situation. He'll be able to achieve the defuse, and a decent idea for Fnatic. To be fair, their pistol round strats were also relatively interesting on Cobble. The problem is it just fell apart. So, VP have won three so far. Or three of three pistol rounds in this uh, over these two best of ones here. So, again, not ideal for Fnatic. Not really a great way for them to start off here. They can have all of the plans and the strats laid down for their T side, but they don't really get to experience or you know realize any of those until they get the decent guns in their hands. Can actually stack up properly against VP here. One bonus being they did plan in the first round, so they can buy into the third if needed. Uh, or, or you know, obviously they can do. Um, and, and two very different sides of VP at the moment. We saw that massive kind of attention towards mid in the first. We had about three players there just trying to keep tabs on twist, essentially. Now a bit more of a default kind of play, and you know we'll see if this works out. You just want to get, uh, you don't want to get run over by just Glocks or just pistols. You know they're dangerous. We, we've seen it so often. There's one flash from Went, and he's probably just going to flash him um, up cap. Smoke can be put down to various spots. Maybe just just the little close one could do it down towards CT if they wanted, so they can drop in. It's just the close smoke. They can drop wherever they want or just try and make a play towards the side. Sadly, the flash didn't catch Snacks. So now he's just got a bunch of players just lining up for him. Beautiful work from, from him there. Gets three. Um, and they've not really lost out too much. Twist does find Snacks, but that means that they can hopefully recover that rifle upgrade, either be Ali or Taz. Uh, be a bit of a loss if it does go down, and they don't actually recover it in the end. They, uh, they weren't able to shoot it across to them. So they actually do lose out on a rifle there. How interesting. Fnatic come in, of course, they didn't force round two after losing the pistol because mm -hmm. they got the bomb down, which means they get that earlier buy in round three, as Lauren did point out. Still, it's not that great, to be fair. They've got, I mean, a couple smokes to work with here. Flashes for everyone in AKs. So that should be enough for Fnatic to try and make something happen. It might not be the most elaborate execute, but it should be enough. Snacks getting chunked down very, very low. And Zodas Neo, both of these vanguards over on long A are being pressured heavily by Fnatic as they come through this smoke. Yeah, Fnatic just going straight out on long, just... Every single player committing out there, that was really nice. At least three players just full on committed, getting towards um, just kind of right at the end there and just trying to dig down, dig deep, and just see if anyone would play into their hands. They already have the man advantage. Um, so this is brilliant. VP looking for an answer back, but actually they just get found by Olaf Meister. And they're, they're actively searching for ways to get back into this one. And considering it was quite costly in round two, this is certainly not going too well for them. Their buys can be incredibly shoddy going into the next round off the back of this, because Fnatic are keeping it clean. They, of course, want a bottom plant to uh, really supplement and just kind of uh, complement their money building. But uh, Taz could cause issues, but Dennis is keeping a really good tab on it. Bialy's a little bit in between them all, but the bomb's on Cat, so again, he can be kind of pincered out of this, unless he hits some of those blinders that we saw on Cobble. Twist was the one that actually went back to check mid, and he had the bomb in hand, so Fnatic don't want to really advance until they've dealt with a couple of these players. Bialy goes for the peak there, and falls immediately. Taz in mid, looking for a straggler, looking for a player that's basically just set to try and watch any rotates, but no one from Fnatic really making themselves shown here. Olaf might be able to get the surprise, but Taz trying to spray down with the P90. It does work out, at least we will be able to get himself a rifle, but Dennis already coming forward. He doesn't want to give a gun away for free, but Taz able to pick it up just around the corner there. Fantastic four style with the long arms. Right, now I have to back away here in towards lower dark. Dennis not peeking, Taz will sneak away, getting away with it. I don't think if anyone's close enough to chase. They, they can still chase fairly well here. Um, he's got to be careful with Dennis. Of time. Yeah, there's, there's still a little bit of time for him to lose on this, and he does need to keep it to hand, so... Keeping cautious enough, and there he goes. Dennis will find it in the end, only losing on Olaf, getting a plan, taking away all those rifles, all those guns from VP, is pretty much put in a really bad spot. Their money's now not great. They get that kind of reset instantly. They don't get to build any economy up just yet. So this is going to be uh, upgraded pistols, maybe a touch of utility to build a play into, basically, is is all they can really hope for here. But Fnatic, we saw already that their, their rounds against Eco upsides are pretty robust at the moment. They didn't lose out on too many of those. They never really got caught out too much on Cobble. Let's see if that you know, maintains to be the case. Oh, look, Meister's so confident out along, just not messing around. I love that. A couple of bullets in his backside there from teammates as Fnatic are trying to set up. And this is a bit more vintage Olaf Meister. I won't try and get ahead of ourselves here, as of course, there's not much armor here on VP to speak of. But still, confidence for him. He still knows when to turn up the heat when he has to. And Neo will be sat in CT, has the deagle trying to do something about it. But no, Fnatic turn it around really nicely from losing the pistol into saving the next round. And of course, into buying five AKs and just smashing VP, only losing one player in the third. It's been a very good transition for them, despite losing the pistol. 
Yeah, this is as soon as they regain control, these have been clean rounds as well. That's that's the important thing to my eyes is the fact that they're going to build up the money really, really nicely in, in quite a quick pace. And on the other side, VP are just, just trying to you know, claw anything together. They do have the AWP on stacks. He's going to be turning, going anti flash towards long, tries to peek out and still gets caught down. Oh, that's Lecro. Whether it be Olaf Meister or Lecro, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's providing these sort of kills, and the nade even catches Pasha. That is a huge bit of impact. Fnatic sacrificed Dennis, sure, but they gained so much off the back of that. And Olaf Meister's up on short there. He's already made his way through mid as Biali was more smoked off. We're not able to challenge this. Still, the smoke had come in from Neo. This will make it a little bit more difficult for Olaf to challenge in the near future. Neo needs to be careful. He knows people are coming at him from long. He knows he has scant seconds to respond to this. Taz is trying to bail him out of trouble, trying to help him there. Necro falls down after being tagged. Something must have happened there, but their twist is going to find Neo when Olaf Meister there p bided his time over on short at least and waited. So did Biali though. Nice little turnaround here with a 2v2. Twist still needs to pick up the bomb. How you can pick he... that up safely. I must have fallen off um, one of the ledges or something on really but low health. It doesn't do damage on the A site. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to watch you back. Twist has recovered the round. I don't think you... Did he have nades left? I don't know. I, I want to watch the replay back. Maybe you could catch it in one of the glimpses. Because I'm really curious. I, I don't think there's any way you can fall enough to do damage to yourself from there. That's just Unless you nice jump off enough. the top of the box on towards, like, um, the rail. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Can you jump off of like... Yeah, my, I don't know, dude. I'm not sure. Why? Oh. Why would you do that, though? Don't know. I'm I don't know. I'll watch it back, just out of curiosity's sake. Um, just because that came down to 1v1. That went from a really favourable situation down to 1v1. Now Vers Pro on the upgraded pistol, because again, their economy's just shot in. Dennis. These openers Fnatic are providing from several players are massive at the moment. Wherever they go, whether it be the long take, B take, short, doesn't matter. They've always seemingly got someone ready. And waiting twist. Even catching one on long there, which is the Glock, and Snacks will at least recover something out of this, but not a great deal, actually. Yeah, there this, we go. Is, this is what you've said, though, about Fnatic's uh, anti-eco uh, rounds. They're very sensible mm. on them a lot of the time here, and they're, they're backing up their entries. They're playing it fairly seriously. Even if they're not maybe setting up their push with a ton of utility, per se, they're still making sure that they don't give away cheap kills to their opponents, which makes it harder for a CT-sided team or a team on the CT side to sort of break back into rounds like that. If they get sort of shut down on their sort of eco rounds or, or force rounds, as it were, when they're trying to make something happen, super hard to get back in the game after falling behind. So Twist now, looking towards those mid doors and Pasha a little bit further push forward on towards Short here. He gets the trade. That's Fnatic, they'll be happy enough with that one now as he's going to put a lot of pressure on Neo as he could be pinched on towards his side 1v3. They're surrounded on all fronts, but Snacks on a quick flank. That's going to make a bit of a difference here. Now they can focus on long. Lecro's already got himself up towards the side. Has to be careful of those flames. Doesn't want to go down again, but it's all of nice to find Neo. And we're back down to a 3v3. So let's see where that bomb's already at. So it's crossed over, and it's going to be going down. I don't think they can particularly stop it. The Mollies are coming in, but Twist has just managed to avoid them. Backs out well, smokes up to allow his teammates some more freedom. Maybe a little bit of a waste, but used nonetheless. And the flash will catch Taz, and now the retake begins. Lecro already stops it before it starts. Twists holding the angle, a little bit of a shoulder peek from Biali. It gives him a bit of freedom and gets the frag too. We're down to a 2v2. Yeah, and now Lecro having to spray down through the smoke just to try and keep VP in arms bay, but it's not going to work. Trades out, and then Biali takes out Olaf Olofmeister. Nice. Little push here for Fnatic up onto that point. They had plenty of utility, of course. And VP managed to get in with some of those Molotovs and make Fnatic sweat just a bit more. Came down to the 1v1 there. Biali coming out on top, gets himself an AWP, and that's the in that VP were looking for. Otherwise, fighting that round, they would have been struggling. Even now, the money's not very good. No, certainly not. UMP for Taz. Ugh, not good at all. Against a fully put up Fnatic, you know, everything you'd want sitting on that side, still with like a nice 2k buff on most can of the still, players. Can still pretty much spread money over four AK buys yeah. next round if they really, lose. Really, really nice here. And look at this spawn from Olaf Meister, straight into long, no messing around, loses it! Snacks quicker on the trigger, already had it under wraps, and Pasha's getting aggressive. Virtus Pro aren't taking this laying down, they're gonna try and push up here now. Keep this advantage building, and... Oh, oh my word, beautiful pickup. The timing was just working out well, and even predicting maybe Dennis being here! Pasha, what a round from him. Three kills, big kills of that. Gets the bomb at top mid. Can't make it fall. You, see the, you see the difference between VP trying to go for CT aggression when they're behind in the round and when they're, they sort of open up and they start mm. well. So here they're already sort of throwing Fnatic into disarray and you can see Pasha with the freedom to push up mid and get those three kills. Now, a few rounds ago, VP already lost two players. Nice by Twist there to find Neo just through the doors. Uh, VP falling behind, like a 3v5, and still, you know, getting aggressive in these 1v1s, wants to, wanting to take angels, wanting to drag themselves, kicking and screaming back into the round. Doesn't work out that way. But this is an excellent position for the Poles, despite Twist's little bit of acrobatics there with the AWP. He will get himself the bomb. 
That's hardly the issue. It's about getting access to these sites. Pretty much all the if routes... If he kills Bialy, he can get to Yeah. But I don't know if he's going to check instantly. No, not quick enough. That's the thing. You, you, when we have X-ray on, when we have the map and all this sort of stuff, and you guys at home have it as well, of course, you can sit there and go, well, if only, why, why wouldn't you check? You know, you, you check like, yeah. But then there's just as so much of a chance that the guy could be up on short. You if, know, it's, it's, it's simply a gamble, and sometimes you'll get that instinct, sometimes you'll get that feeling, sometimes you have information from prior, but for him, there's three players alive, and I have no idea where they and are. And that's not a situation that Fnatic have been in yet in this map, so you mm -hmm. can't go like, oh, I know Bialy has a tendency to do this late round. Oh, a fail flash there, bouncing back at Fnatic, but... Still enough goes in the direction of Pasha to force him back for a moment. Just gives him pause though now as he flashes just around the corner. Trades again. Still decent situation for the T side. They're going to get that one less player over on the A side. But they don't press their advantage any further. Nice by Snacks. That's very Cajun BS. That sort of early little peek towards lower tunnels there. Just at the start of the round to give yourself a man advantage. Nicely done. A Fnatic are left with three. If you're a Fnatic, of course, you would want to exploit the fact that you had um, a 4v4 on the T side at that point by you know, trying to split them up. So that player being in that pinch position could have been huge for them. That being taken down from Snacks, frees them up. So now Verse Pro can just sit 2-2 two -two on either side. They could they could choose to do it another way, but that's what they've gone for here. Neo towards Cat, Snacks towards maybe Goose a little more than anything. Olaf Meister a gets reminded. Shot. Yeah, pretty much. He, he's getting the info, uh, him, info pretty much there. It's just... I'm going to have to sacrifice something. Either I, I take the full peak and get every bit of info, or do I just shoulder peak, maybe take some damage and just find out where they are. So it's going to be the B hit coming through. You've got Taz playing in that close left corner. And actually with the pop flash, that can still do work. Set up Bialy, who has the molly, the smoke, and the other flashes. So even all oh, the mollies can start reaching right now. He doesn't actually flash out. There's a team flash coming through for him. He did do damage, but it's not enough. Look at Olaf Meister. The power this man is providing so far with the others as well is bringing Fnatic back into this round. And I like this, actually. Fnatic just leave Dennis. Allow him to cross towards the side. The rest of them, they pull back. Olaf's going to have to wrap fairly quickly here from mid. So he needs to hope his teammates... Yep, perfect. Smoke down now. This is going to give Olaf Meister some time to wrap through without having to run and make too much sound and, and maybe wake the dead in that regard. And just perfect, perfect, perfect setup there for Fnatic. But by, by enough time, Neo's left on his own. The site has got two players on there, canvassed out. A very good way to break back in here for Fnatic after a little bit of an unfortunate one. And VP, their economy is shattered yet again. They just haven't been able to stabilize whatsoever. It is that CT side of economy, which can be a bit of a nightmare if you don't manage it well. And Fnatic break back in around like that really nicely. Olaf, excellent entry to that B site mm. those first couple of kills. But Taz was preempted out of his little hidey hole there, unfortunately, with the uh, UMP. There's only so much you can do when there's a molly at your feet. Dangerous game in mid there, crossing back and forth. Bialy's just, just trolling him, I'm not sure. <laughs> teasing them at this point in death. Gotta be a little careful. There is one Deagle up there. I could certainly do the work, but... Ash is so desperate for that CT aggression. You could see him pushing up Cap before pushing up Long. He's only got the CZ and the upgraded pistol, so why not try and make yeah. something happen? It's, it's all about, uh, I guess, Gambit to this point, and the big old nade from, from Lake Road is going to find his feet. But yeah, it's all about that kind of making a play happen, because you can't just sit back and wait for it, obviously, on these sort of rounds. You've got to try something, and... A little bit of a crossfire in mid, just, you know, locking down a couple of angles. And so far, Fnatic keeping it very clean. This is something that, again, I'm very, very impressed with. That flash was just not deep enough. Didn't get punished for it, but uh, still. Yali's going to fall back, find a new position. And Fnatic just keep chipping away at Virtus Pro. Yeah, there are a series of, uh, like, aggressive plays and crossfires trying to be set up, or Virtus Pro are trying to set them up here at the moment. None of them have worked out thus far. You could see that Fnatic breeze through mid fairly comfortably, even though Snacks, I think it was, was able to uh, get away with it or escape from that one. Now finds himself here with just that CZ in a spot where he can sort of jump up and get one of those sort of freak headshots or, or cause problems. But you can see Lecro purposely sitting back now as well in a good position to catch him off. And we'll be Taz, three plays here for VP trying to work it from CT. There it is, Snacks finds that headshot we were just talking about. Now it's Taz's turn to step up, but he does. He gets the deagle in there, but Lecro finally deciding that he's had enough of this nonsense. Bialy, able to pick up a deagle from the fallen body of Taz, but that's a very tough angle to make it work with Olaf moving across there, and Snacks will try and challenge with the CZ up close. Lecro purely just going to jump down, allow Olaf Meister to step forward and take the shot. He definitely doing a bit more heavy lifting in this map. Mm. And Fnatic, not as clean as I would have liked it to be. Virtus Pro not getting too much done with the group in towards CT with the pistols there. No, and the money's still complete trash. Look at this. Uh, Famous is having to come through, limited amounts to play with, no kit. Um, really far from perfect. They at least have the AWP, I guess, on Snacks, but any uh, you know, early deficit is a bit grim. Um, Snacks is looking for, for a way back into this. Oh, can't quite hit the shot through the battle. It's right in the middle there. It's Wenton, I'm pretty sure, up there, just kind of cowering. Trying to cling on to his life. He does manage to make it away eventually, but a little bit of a dangerous start there. Could have been a big pickup for Virtus Pro, but wasn't to be the case. Now, 
at the moment. Fanatics still have all of those mollies to put to these corners, so this could be a slow one. You see Fnatic now very much just grouping towards Longhouse. We saw Pasha here last round aggressing from the CT side with, the, with that CZ hoping to get something done before getting naded and scattered across to the four wins. So, yeah, Fnatic maybe trying to figure out exactly what VP have as well gun-wise because this is a little bit of a, a weird one with double Famous coming in and limited utility for the poles. They have no smokes left. So after this salvo uh, of those sort of billows out and blows out, then that's going to be it. 4VP in terms of stall mechanics, essentially. As Olaf Meister there as well manages to take that fire. I believe that was in towards lower dark. So that was Snacks getting picked up around mid here. But Patch is going to be ready to receive here on short. Nice work. Shuts down two players. And Molly went over his left shoulder. So he was able to stand ahead of that and make it work. Olaf goes in for a pig. Gets information. Sees two players. Backs away. Waiting for a bit of CT aggression. He knows that Patch is the kind of player that's going to provide that kind of thing. But it doesn't matter. Neo comes forward. It's a two-man setup going into this salvo. And Twist falls there to USP of Pasha. It's a bloody brawl over here on short. But VP come out on top. And now Lecro with it all to do in a 1v3. And Pasha has picked himself up an AWP, and the bomb is just in front of him. Yeah, absolutely relentless on shore there to make something happen, but Lecro now pulls it back. Now, this nade can do work. That If that finds Pasha... Oh, peace. What? Oh, okay, right. Taz picks Lecro there as he jumps down. Oh, if that had hit. That could have been deadly, but no, Pasha there being, again, the, the redeeming factor for Virtus Pro to my eyes. His aggression, his work on Cat has been lovely. He had the support from Neo there that time, so both of them were able to kind of work off each other, but... He's been making plays, and, and you know it's it's tricky to make plays on this map on the CT side. Eh? It's it's not it's not an easy one. It's it's very very tough, especially when you're behind. You don't have that full utility to put into place to allow yourself that little bit of an unlock. But now I can see Neo on the double orb here with snacks. So again, a little bit of a difference here. But Virtus Pro finally have some money to play with. Fnatic still come to the round with uh, a reasonable amount of utility to, to put to their use. I guess they actually didn't get to use most of it last round because they got completely roadblocked there on towards short by Pasha and Neo coming with the double peak scenario. Twist now in lower dark. Not seeing anything on towards short there. Wenton's already gone ahead to find it. A flash came in over the top by Biali or Neo, whichever it was, who are watching mid right now. Biali still has a Famous there, so wasn't able to upgrade that via the last round. And that bomb slowly in the hands of Olaf Meister onto the right of your screen there if you're looking at Neo. So he will make his way down in towards mid and also Wenton is converging. Couple flashes here. So obviously very, very easy for Fnatic to pop flash this and try and push on towards Neo. Bialy's not going to be there to help him. So Neo ideally wants to make himself scarce. He throws the smoke in. We'll have to see if this deters Fnatic or not, as it doesn't seem to be the case. Neo doesn't want to overstay his welcome, but also wants to get information about what's happening on short and even a pig. So Wenton keeps himself out of range. There comes the pop flash in now. Neo, yep, good idea. Just going to back away here to the boxes. So Fnatic incrementally makes some ground here. Just bit by bit. Now Neo can oh. peek. Gets on towards Wenton. That's a good start. But no one else thought coming. Now shot through the door. And he just gets completely filled with shards of wood even as these bullets were coming through the woodwork. It's going to be Lecro to find Bialy. And now Taz. Oh, it's our favourite car spot from the man. Two kills for him and finally shut down by Lecro. So Fnatic haven't even planted the bomb yet. That was left in the open. Dennis was forced to go and pick it up. The big damage from the nade going to come through, just making a little bit of a situation worse there for Twist. But Pash has got a really nice angle. I think he had almost a little bit of a glimpse of Twist then. Just the back turn, but now position now noted. This surely can't work out. He's been providing wonderful plays so far, but not against an orb and a pre-positioned rifle in the hands of Twist. Not going to be happening. So, Fnatic do just about edge forward, 7-5. They stabilize, and now Virtus Pro have to deal with those repercussions. As you said, it's it's a um, it's it's a punishing mistress. The CT side, you know, when you build up the money, it's it's a glorious time to be alive. I but find it I find it very stressful playing CT side on, on this just, map. I, especially does too. I don't know what it is about the map, but I find it so hard to implement or you know work around those lesser buys. I feel it's so so tricky, even on the upgraded pistols, to make yeah. it happen. But you're seeing it here again now. Um, before it was it's quite brute forcey from uh, Fnatic, just kind of taking themselves inside. We're seeing again. Gorgeous stuff from Twist. I have been consistently impressed with this man as to what he's been doing. And Snacks gets spotted out as well. Cool gets put over towards Dennis. Olaf waits towards Long. And you're just seeing the veterans going back and forth there. So one of the biggest things you need in, in an anti-eco situation like this, especially against Tease, uh, is patience. All right? Normally you're told and you know your, your mindset is to get aggressive and try and you know push in towards sites and be strong and, and take action, of course, and set things up on, uh, on sites with you know a bit of utility. But... And around like that, you can see people like Olaf Meister sitting behind Longhouse, waiting for the push to come to him, waiting. And Virtus Pro, 
always seeming to provide some of that aggression. Obviously, on you know they're, they're a team that likes a bit of that CT mm. aggression, especially early in the round. But when they're on pistols, they're going to try even more. But it's CT side. It's a punishing mistress, and it's also a double eco for the poles. Yeah, a bit of a stack at long this time for them. Uh, not a bad idea. Fnatic have been going there on quite a regular basis. The Ooh. nades don't really work out too well. And Wenz has now flashed them up. He does spot out one just above the fire and the flames there. But can he find the rest? There's still two players in the smoke, but he has the support from Twist. Now, Twist has kept this in check, but will they expect Neo? Surely not. Neo's right behind him. He does get the deal. Oh, and he follows it up so perfectly towards Wenton. That's changed this. That could have made a big impact if maybe Taz found one. But it's not the case. The bomb's at B, and this is all but done. But Taz, you know, Neo just showing some real nice class there for himself. Good moment from him. In fact, you know, he didn't even know that Wenton was in the pit because no. as Wenton crossed over the ledge, he dropped into pit. Mm. I mean, we, it, Neo was flash and there was smoke in his way as well. Very um, intricate setup by VP there as well to try and, you know, give themselves a fighting chance in that one. So many flashes coming in from Fnatic as well. It was very, very hard for them to actually get anything done whatsoever. So. If you're Neo, you're satisfied with grabbing an AK here. Yep. Five rounds here on the CT side. It's not bad for VP. Obviously, after you know having to go for pistols and then you know a pistol force in this round with a bit of utility to back it up, that's kind of where you want to get the round here. But VP had to be satisfied with sort of waiting, being patient, and buying up on the next. And it still won't be the best buy either. We'll have a little bit, but I think mean, the least, yes, yeah, 4350 for for a Pasha here. So. It's okay, we know how expensive those M4s can be to get your hands on though. You can see what kind of money is being expended in that regard. So Neo is going to be stuck with a deal here, as he did. I think he passed an M4 over to Pasha here. No, he's got a, he's got a saved AK, that's fine. That's not too bad. Oh, oh God. the Dak Dak's out. <laughs> get back, son. I mean, that is, that is the that's quintessential. Great. That's how you counter a player with a Dak Dak, or as we like to call it, the, uh, the auto sniper rifle. I mean, it takes, it, takes, it? Yeah, it takes two shots, obviously, to kill with an auto sniper. One headshot or one shot with an AWP can counter it out. So if you guys are Pasha, playing in them... that's really awkward. <laughs> it's, it's that horrible exchange where you're like, oh, I've got my nade out, he's going to repeat. This happens to Pasha so much today. Yeah. Tonight especially, he's actually often being caught with weird timings while he has a grenade in his hand. It's just kind of... Oh, I had not blame him. It's kind of really unfortunate, if I'm honest. Anyway. Bialy picks up Wenton as he tries to pressure in through the mid, and the bomb's going B via backyard. It was Twist that was carrying it. But in the meantime, Twist comes to the site and realizes it's only Dennis there to help him. It's two AWPs now that has to make the entry, and Taz very classy. Just a couple taps there with the M4, and just to finish off there on towards Dennis, bravely faces down two players with AWPs and gives Virtus Pro that six round in the half. Not a terrible note to finish on here. If VP can find that killer edge, the killer instinct on the T side, they'll be fine. Uh, the one thing I would say is that if you remove away the amount of pistols won by Verz Pro, this would be a very different looking game, I'd feel. Uh, at least the scoreline wise, um, again, second half could be completely different depending on that start. At least in this case, I mean, it wasn't that Verz Pro got three, three rounds. They it went like, two and yeah. Still not good. So this is a pistol round now that Fnatic really do want to win. Let's see though if VP can keep pushing him out. A pistol for VP will make things even Stevens after the break. We'll see you when we return for the second half of Dust 2.
Well, it was a hard-fought pistol round that gave Virtus Pro the peek into this game, but very quickly, Fnatic turned things on their head, messing with the Pulse budget on the CT side quite a lot early on, and VP had to scrape things out to a six to nine round half time. Mm -hmm. Now, VP going towards the T side here, and we're looking, uh, obviously, to see what Fnatic can do. Pistol rounds, yeah. ever so important by this part of the night. It's become a bit of a theme. You've got Dennis, you've lost three so far out of three pistol rounds. We'd like to see maybe Fnatic get one there as well, and that would put him in a very dominant position oh, yeah. here. Uh, massively so. It, it feels like such a common thing that we've been saying throughout this, how important they are, but these games honestly are getting so much closer because of just zero pistol round wins really for Fnatic. They need to pick it up. And it, you know, as you said, when you have a player like Dennis available to you, it's surprising to not see him having that big impact. He's not really been there in the pistols sure. just yet. He's had pistol moments, don't get me wrong. There's been a couple of crazy CZs here and there, but... You know, there's, there's not been that impact in that moment. So for me, I, I want to see that happen for him. Hopefully, we get to see a bit of a competitive game, make Virtus Pro play those gun rounds out, because this looks far more competitive to me than Cobble did. We'd like him to see uh, those moments of, yeah, some aggression from Virtus Pro mm. here. Generally, at the start of the round, it's quite nice to see, but Pasha coming up mid there, once the initial advantage had been eked out for Virtus Pro, enabled him to get three kills and really set Fnatic rolling. But despite this, Fnatic putting together a couple chains of rounds here and there to give them nine overall. And, it all started, of course, with sort of messing with Virtus Pro's flow in those first couple rounds. Mm. So, let's see how this all plays out. Ten seconds coming into this one, of course. We'll be back on with a pistol. I mean, so far this this game, Olaf Meister, again, up to his old tricks, but twist with 19 frags from the half. Definitely, definitely worth a mention. We're seeing some really nice individual moments again. Uh, I just want to... What's that? Where's Wenton been? It's been quiet for him. Yeah, and uh, you know, we, we talked to uh, Henry on the desk. He says, you know, yeah, coaching and uh, IGLing and having a low score is a bit of a cop-out, he says. It's not much of an excuse, so we need to see more from Wenton, even if he is being groomed to be the IGL here. I hate the, the, the phrasing of being groomed. It doesn't have any positive sort of in <laughs> intentions in my mind. Well, if you like, groom a cat, you like, you know, comb the fur, put a bow in the hair or, you know, put whatever. Put bows in your cat. All right, all right, all right. Let's, let's move on because I want to make some terrible jokes that just will I was on that one. Fight. I was on that I'll one. Be, I'll be at, I won't even be near New York at this point, but so far, this is Bialy's round. This is four kills, right? Now, it started off being like, okay, he's got a couple of kills. He's got the ace. What is that? When, can we just appreciate where that just came from? Because he just, like, individually picked apart a kind of default play from Fnatic. It's just like, can can Fnatic ever win a pistol now? It just doesn't seem like they can. Well, not today. I mean, <laughs> and you know what? So many times, we watch Flipside. It's a good example. Um who are a team, in my opinion, who have a stupid amount of potential, but they lose yeah. a lot of games, and we sit at the desk, and we're like, yeah, well, didn't win any pistol, did they? That's kind of why they lost. And yet, Fnatic are still ahead. They won their mm. first map, although it was close. But this is where Virtus Pro get back to 9-9, at the least, here. Very, very much so. I mean, we're, we're forcing Deagles here for Fnatic, of course. They're, they're sick of this nonsense of having to play from behind every single half. Or at least it feels that way for them now, being uh, obviously not well armed. So they're going to go into this one, and VP want to work down long. We've got Pasha up the front there with the P90. There's not going to be anyone attending here mm. for Fnatic, and now the smoke comes in. They're going to get access to this site quite easily. Yeah, every, almost all players going towards the side self as well. Bialy's up there, runs up there. Taz is holding back by the cars, and Dennis looking for some of that magic. He's getting absolutely nothing here. Virtus Pro being the brick wall facing them. Not a single frag to be picked up just yet, and there it is. Finally, Olaf Meister cracks things back, possibly for Fnatic, but no kit, nothing much more. They do recover a rifle, which is actually lovely. But for Virtus Pro, this is exactly what they need. Build up well, keep clean numbers, chase them down, get get that rifle away, everything they want here. Neo's got the uh, MAC-10, you've got a P90 on Pash. He can run that into the third round really nicely. I know he likes to play with it as well, yep. so not too surprising. Snacks with the UMP, you know, they can afford to go hunting somewhat. Um, not really opting to go too far here, not going, you know, into the jaws of what Fnatic could have. Yeah, I mean, they, they're probably still having, you know, sort of flashbacks to the first half there where they gave, gave Fnatic an opening and Fnatic obviously able to scavenge, scavenge most of their weapons in the third round, I believe it was, after saving for just pistols and actually being able to buy up because they got the first plant. So VP would like a smoother transition here because they don't really want to self-sabotage this attempt at bringing the scores even. And Fnatic, you know, it's so funny about Fnatic, they play their anti-eco so well. Like, Virtus Pro, at no stage were they able to take Fnatic by surprise mm. on these, like, half buys or forces or, you know, pistol rounds at all. Fnatic were like, no, we're not letting you get in here. But I'm giving over these pistols already puts them behind the eight ball. And Fnatic's gun rounds were also very, very good. So now VP 
Don't want to give them any opportunities because we know what they can do with it. Snacks, though, nice little moment Gorgeous there with the UMP. Control. Bit yeah. of money made as well, no less. And Olaf behind the smoke. There's a gap. There's an AK in his hands. There's a spray that on towards Snaps. He does connect it. And Lecro there getting involved with the pistols. This is exactly what Virtus Pro didn't want to happen. But I've got two oh. players make it one because Lecro is still making things happen there. That was over through the mid. I don't know how I picked that shot up. And now Dennis hoping to emulate the efforts of his teammate here. Just <laughs> dancing. Barrel dolls, Taz, apparently. Taz, it's just... just hit the okay. shot, my man. Hit the shot. This is, this is the time you need to provide it and deliver. Lecro's got a Mac 10. You should win this. You have 31 HP short. It's not great. That smoke's dissipating. Where do you think he is now, Taz? Work it out. Here we go. Check CT, but he doesn't check Cat. He made his choice. It was a 50-50 almost at that point, but Lecro was waiting on Catwalk. Gets the kill, and they turn it on its head. And off the back of that kind of extended fight with Olaf Meister, everyone else capitalized on that at the same time, getting a couple of frags off the back, and that horrific battle over by Long by the barrel just didn't work out. And this is how, this is why I talked about self-sabotage, right? Mm -hmm. Vertispro didn't want to do that, but Lecro gets how, I don't know how many Deagle kills straight up mid there, despite Dennis having his own problems with it. Um, around for Fnatic here is just far more than you expect. And the fact that they come out of this with double AWP straight into the mix, whereas Bialy's only got a Tech 9. Uh, yeah, that was Vertus Pro's window. It was wide open. They were there. They were ready to make the jump, but Fnatic just hold on now. Ooh, nice. Good timing. Twist yeah. throwing a, a HG there, if I'm not mistaken. And even just Vertus Pro's approach then, trying to play ahead of the mid smokes. But Dennis and Olaf Meister are both here. This is this is worrying. Both watching this cross, should I say? It's Lecker on B with Olaf Meister, not at the same site, of course. But the great pop flash will make them just be hindered. They can't approach the site anymore. They're caught up by the smoke, and Lecker just giving us a masterclass of how to play around the smoke. He's trying to get the spam shot just on towards the box, but sadly. Sadly, Verspro were no longer there. Taz and Pasha already pushed off. Playing a little bit of uh, ground combat on this one. Not going to find much more there. Otherwise, they can't hit the shot on the cross, and they do make it through. Taz is going to try and plant, but it's a 2v3, and Pasha's got a lot to watch here if they want to get this one done. Taz just needs to behave himself here, not force himself through this one. Actually, not too bad. Taz trades himself into a 1v1. Now, not really sure. I mean, he knows Dennis is there. He looks towards tunnels, maybe not realizing that he's actually Taz, in the 1v1 situation. Doing? Oh, he had to set that up so much better, but Dennis comes around and picks him off just he as he was... drunk. It was just like casually looking around Why him. was he looking into his tunnels? Didn't he know? He, he, must have, he must not have known he was in a 1v1 already. Oh, man. Like, uh, like uh, okay, so you know how long it takes normally for a flash to pop, right? So, you, like, for him, he obviously considered that as a pop flash coming in or a flash of any variety, right? But it was bounding off like four walls. He was just like, I'm just gonna just look around and hope for the best. Like, what's going on, Taz? He's having a mayor of a game. Like, he's actually not doing bad scoreboard-wise, but the last couple of rounds, oof, not pretty, not pretty. But still, they're still in this game, 11 to eight. The money, not good though. That's a big deficit now. Now they're in a bit of a pickle. They need to get a bomb plant. They need to really start building back here. But Twist, look at the money he's about to be making here. This is brilliant stuff. All denied as soon as they stepped in front of that smoke and finally get another one on the board. Virtus Pro. Where have you gone? Come on, you've got to build back into this. They know they can. They've got some incredible power. They've been showing it so far. Individuals have had moments. Where's the Pasha from the CT side? The aggressive, uh, incredibly powerful Pasha that we saw coming up. Cat every now and then. I want to see that back here, because so far they've been giving an absolute schooling by Fnatic. Well, VP can't even get bomb plants as well. That was what they were hoping for last round. And to be fair, on that, if you think back to the pistol round as well, they had such good side control because there was no one challenging them at long, but this time they go forward short and they are just mowed down by mm -hmm. UMPs. And Twist is going to keep that one. This is fair enough to bring it into this round, build up a little bit of a buffer here. If Fnatic keep going, they'll be able to buy for the rest of the game if that's going to be them winning out. Mm. Wenton not being challenged here towards long. It's going to be Snacks and Taz grouped up towards mid. And the closest player is Twist, who only has a UMP and doesn't really look to challenge right now. So patient play from him. Three players from VP moving on towards short. It will be Dennis. The only one to receive, because Wenton is actually still out towards uh, Long House mm. or close to it. So Dennis will have to hold his own for at least five to seven seconds. And yeah, this is actually really hard to hold on your own. For me, I'd prefer maybe an Orpa to be playing it by the cars. It's just personal preference from what I enjoy watching. But Dennis is incredibly good at this. And obviously, as you said, you know, if Wenton pulls himself up from Long, he can certainly support here as well. But surely the plan will be up soon. Twist isn't that close either. He can go on a long flank or come into CT, but here comes the hit. And Verse Pro good have a good shot at this. This is the thing. Dennis is still very much alone, but he finds a brilliant angle. Spots the bomb, drops it out of Pasha's hands, and now has four players slowly but surely encroaching. Another great flash comes in. Dennis gets set up for more, and now we're down to two. Verse Pro get worked away at by Fnatic in sheer power. And now Snacks, sure, has made it look close, but he's only got seven HP. Yeah, one more ticket that Molotov would have done here. In. It's going to be Lecro in CT and Olaf Meister going to wrap around from long. No bomb planted here as well, even worse for Virtus Pro. Dennis, I mean, he didn't have to go out there like, you know, Spartacus and kill everyone. He just. <laughs>
played for time so well. Olaf gets the finish on what snacks through the box. And you can see one flash out, bought him a few seconds. Virtus Pro had to wait. He had the second in his hand, and then he saw some of Virtus Pro's utility coming in over the top. He makes himself scarce. He picks only the right side of the box. Only once Virtus Pro are fully committed to this A side. Yeah. He wasn't firing towards short. He was firing across the A side as Virtus Pro had already made their way up there. And a additional flash coming in from a teammate, I believe, or Probably maybe it was a HE. Yeah. yeah, really helped him just get that one done. Just impressive. That's how you hold your nerve in pressure situations. Yeah, it really is actually, to be honest. It's, it's just showing his his class again. This is one of the, the greats here. That's the point. He's such an experienced player. But Twist now can be creating the crossfire. You can see Elfmeister waiting, baiting them in, making them walk through the blender in mid, and now Snacks has nothing, and he goes down. I know, this is pretty sick from Fnatic, especially on an individual level there. Mm. Wenter really played his part in the previous round, and I'm harping on it. Yeah, he's 4-17, and 17, but uh, again, I'm, I'm not really too worried about his performance in that regard at all, because a lot of Fnatic's strats are orchestrated not around him, and as other players, his spearheads. You know, Dennis to receive pushes to bend like a sapling and snap back in the face of VP as they try and push. Yeah, how many plays have we seen directly towards Long here? Uh, not too many. So again, he's not had much play yet on the CT side. There's been other players greeting them very quickly. Sure. But now, as, as I think we just spotted there, double up on the T side snacks and Pasha running this. I guess when your back's tall, you've got to bring out something. I feel like this pace, oh well, maybe not in this case. There. The totem pole of Orpness there is going to pick up Olofmeister, but I don't know, I feel like this pace has suited Fnatic thus far. Plays like Dennis, very sort of, you know, settled in the way that they receive these pushes, but. Molotov's coming out on the B side there. Snacks with the, the AWP finds on towards Twist as well. This is excellent. I mean, you're supposed to get picks and work from the outsides of sites. You're not just blunder your way down the middle and get those kills. Incredible stuff here. Both all plays making it happen. But Dennis now might just be fed up with this nonsense. He comes through the mid, picks up Taz. And still Ta Snacks and Pasha are still working towards mid or looking for an opportunity there. VP have a lot of map control and with their smokes on short, they can sort of rest easy and know no one's going to go for aggressive picks on them, or at least it's not likely anyway. Yeah, this is so hard for Fnatic to hold on to. Versa have, have the numbers advantage. They have everything they need to in this, in theory, to just build this round up. This, this should be, you know, not one and done necessarily, but it, it should be in the bag. Four players against three. They already have players up cap. Snacks is waiting, just praying that Lecro would dare go for it. Now, who's that on A? So it's, it's actually going to be Wenton. So, oh, and the timing's not going too well. Oh, my God, he still gets it, Pasha? Didn't expect that, and now Wenton's making up for a very quiet performance so far. Two big kills. Spots out where they're coming from. Quick flash towards CT. Blinds up Dennis, but it's down to a 2v2. Snack's already low. Can be tricky, but he's got the AWP and he's got the bombs. He needs to be one to plant this. Neo has to play the babysitting role. Keep him safe while he does this, pretty much. Playing from the cars, waiting for the push-up, and bomb is down. There are kits available for both Fnatic players here, but look at this aggression going towards CT. What are you doing? Snacks goes for it there. Tries to make something big happen, but the hero play gets thrown back in his face, and that was where Virtus Pro could have shut things down. They could have tried to pacify Fnatic, starting to build up. But no, it's going to be Dennis straight up towards the bomb site, proud as a peacock to get the defuse and put Fnatic on match point. That was what? It... Sometimes you got to make big plays, Mitch. But that was probably not the time. I'll just bang it down to CT with my up. All right. Like, okay, like seriously, is that like a lack of information play? Is I don't it like know. maybe I could go CT and control? Because he's got a player on long. So if you're doing this, you must surely think either oh, can he's only come from short. It, but, okay. Uh, still. Did he expect two plays there as well? Because it's reasonable to think one short, one CT in that Why case. Why does Lecro have an org? Um, because oh. he's, he's probably throwing it back in Neo's face, actually. Remember that phase that where Neo true. could play in the org? Uh. I remember so many overpass games where we played that, and it was disgusting because yeah. it worked, but it's like, hey, Neo, are you mad? You can't even afford this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> my, just... my, my Gucci org, what you got? I don't, I hate the org. The thing is, it does have viable positions, and it is, you, you know, you know those people who can do the analysis breakdown of why it's viable? It, it can be kind of explained, but I still don't like it. Anyway, Dennis and Olaf both back on the Orps here. We do have that short play seemingly coming out again, but this time, I don't see it going so well, or well, about well, the same as it went before, if I'm completely honest. Let's be real, the orgs for COD players transitioning over towards CS. <laughs> that's, that's really what it's for. It's really not. And eventually they learn. We don't do that. Well, I mean, speak for yourself, but... I do. <laughs> You're going to have to in this case, <laughs> given the disparity between our skill levels at Counter-Strike. <laughs> However, 
Tennis now, again, like his patience here is just really putting himself in such good situations, but he's spoiled for choice, that's the problem. He gets near with the very least now on a smash. I guess a flash going out on towards Bialy. Gonna slow him up on towards the side. Dennis doesn't care. He is the menace of your nightmares. He gets a little tag on, and that's gonna be Fnatic wrapping up in a pink bow instead of back to Poland. Nicely done there. A much more convincing finish on Dust too than what we saw on that previous map. Patient play pays mm. dividends, and Fnatic taking it all the way to the bank. Yeah, for me, I, I my eyes were set towards Dennis throughout that game, and sure, he didn't live up to the Pistolero title he gets given a lot of the times, but outside of that, on the buy rounds, on the orbs, you know, whatever he had, he made it work really, really well, and he was able to lock down that site on the CG side so comfortably with just, you know, that minimal spot coming from Wenton, the really nice flashing, good timing off the back, really nice little crossfires. It was just really enjoyable to watch, and sadly for VP, you know, I, I wanted to see more from that match, if I'm completely honest. Yes, I mean, the, the thing is, no pistols won for Fnatic reflects kind of badly on them, but also even worse on VP because they mm. get that advantage, they get the momentum running at the start of the map and yeah. aren't able to do anything with it. Their gun rounds seem to be lacking and are on an individual level. You did point out there were some streakiness displayed yeah. from some of these players here where they were hot and cold a few times. We saw a moment from Pasha still waiting for the return to the vintage yeah. Pasha, but we will still be waiting for that one. Now let's go over towards the desk as Alex and Co break it down a little bit more for us. Perfect stuff. Thank you very much, Pansy and Uber. Indeed, let's try and expand upon the points they were making at the Casa desk just to start us off. They were suggesting that Despite not winning a single pistol, Fnatic come away with 2-0. Of course, uh, that's VP conceding two additional losses now, putting them at, I think that's five and seven or eight. In fact, I had it in front I think of me. you're correct there. Yes, okay, so they were five and six prior to this. So, uh, two losses for them. Conceding all the pistol rounds, Fnatic still picking up the win. Much more convincing on Dust2, Chad. I mean, this this has been a, a bit of a... I don't want to say we've been we've been rude about VP, but off air we have had a lot of criticism towards the Polish side over these these last two matches. It looked like they wanted to get that game over and done with real right. quick with the ecos. They're all just running in together. I know people say, "Oh, you spread out too much in ecos and stuff," but they were just like five men rushing until everyone was dead. Like I, I don't know what was going on. No um, structure. But I mean, even with the, even with weapons in their hands, like we didn't necessarily we weren't necessarily impressed by some of their executes. No, they, they the, when they did the A execute, Henry was saying that they, they didn't even do it right. The first time we saw yeah. them do it, they didn't drop that man down to CT. When we saw them do it then against Dennis and he just kept flicking him with the AWP, didn't work so well for him either. But they went five guys across the bridge into the site and yeah. they just got mopped up. And, yeah, you know, so that's good basically flashes. the tactic I was describing okay, in that long segment. I'm yeah, not going to do it again, <laughs> but I'm just going to say it. But obviously, you can see how that works, right? You're supposed to go drop a guy down and then the person on the ramp, he's got no actual control of the situation to spray two, 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 two or three people down, like was exactly what exactly. happened. So you have the guy coming in, the flashes are going over, and while the CT's flash, the guy around the CT's one and kills him. That's how that XQ does it. Pretty much every top team has that tactic, and they do it in, like Chad said, five people across the site, and that makes it so much easier to handle. You can drop a couple of flashes in the same position, Molotov for another bomb site, stuff like that, and it seems like VP just haven't got things together on that map as of yet. They keep saying they're going to bring it into the map pool, but these kind of performances, you're winning both pistols, you're only picking up eight rounds, and you look streaky on the T side, and you can't even execute your tactics efficiently. For me, they've got a lot more work to do to finish it off. Can you in any way theory craft and explain what Snacks was going for with that or the last to round? CT? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Castus more. was so confused. I mean, so could, I, yeah. Okay, so my, my theory, okay, you didn't we, really agree with no, that. I think, uh, we might have so, the replay to show you guys. Okay, this was the, is this the one? No, this, um, okay, this was just Dennis clearing This is when they did the execute and it, yeah. was, it, was, it was wrong. So basically, right, he had two HP or something like that. It's a 2v1. Oh, it's a 2 on 2 right? And he jumps down to CT spawn. In my head, he's yeah. trying to get that one kill. He just wants to get one kill, do something completely surprising that no one expects. Sure. You go down there, bang one person out of the bottom, and then he's like 1v1, and Neo's got a high chance of winning that round, right? You've got the advantage of the bomb, which some people consider an extra man yeah. available in the situation, right? So he's thinking, well, they might be coming from short. If they just get one bullet on me, I'm down, so I'm going to flash in and just try and do the crazy play. Okay. It looks hard. If it got one kill, we probably wouldn't have any discussion. He's probably winning the round. But the fact is, he died. It looks crazy, right? It looks ridiculous. Let's have a look at this right now. So Sorry. he's got what? So nine HP. So he's one bullet dead. He has, he has no idea the CTs are coming from short. It's crazy. But if he goes down there and gets one kill, it's actually quite unlikely both CTs are going to be in that same position, to be fair, on a retake. But. I don't know. That's the only way I can justify. I'm not saying that's why. I did no, that's no, the only but, reasoning but I come up with. down. Head. You have an AWP. You planted yeah. for short. Well, you planned for short. No, I don't. Okay, didn't necessarily do that. So maybe he was scared to cross long. I mean, Chad, it was, you, it was you, a low percentage play. play. Okay. Like it, it was already on 14 rounds, right, for Fnatic. So it was a 2v2. It was a good chance, you know, to potentially turn the tide at the half. Mm. And he's going. I'm going to jump into this one with an AWP, and uh, hopefully I get lucky. Sure. That was yeah. That that's, was that's really much it. You know, yeah, but like, it. I'm just trying to give some reading behind his thought process, sure, right? Sure. Yeah. So it does seem like kind of Vertspro were throwing caution to the wind then towards the end of Dust 2. Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah. yeah. 
We struggle to see too much depth from the Polish side. It does seem like that is all we have to say. We often have a lot more to say, but it does seem like Vertus Pro have kind of left us wanting more. And if you want more, you can get all that information over at the Score Esports application. Grab it on your smartphone. You know the drill by now. It's got your news, your articles, and your stats. If you do want to see who was performing, Wenton going from top to bottom, from Cobble to Dust2, who was having a bit of an up and down performance, hot and cold. Katy Perry style will be back after the break with another set of games. You get G2. They're going to be battling Dignitas after that one. So be intrigued to see how G2 do perform. After, I mean, they've been singing the praises of Body. We'll see if he can go ahead and fill up the stats after the break.